Hi friends, just a quick note on today's episode. Some of our conversation contained adult themes, so please use caution regarding where and with whom you listen. everyone. Welcome to episode 99. Wow. Of Jen and Millie, where a Gen Xer and a millennial share the strength-based perspective through which they view the world. We are your hosts, Allison and Tess. 99 is a lot. 99. Imagine all of the things that we've learned in 99 episodes, stretching from what year to what year? I, don't I mean, remember. I know the year now. <laughs> You know, you know the present year? Okay, good. It's 2022. Pretty sure this is 2-2. But um, math is hard. I was trying to remember. 2017? 2016? When was Garth Brooks our mm-hmm. gala guest? I don't know. By the way, I saw a Bob Seger cover band mm-hmm. uh, two, three weekends ago. Yeah. And this is how old the band members are. We're listening to the band, and all of a sudden, a song that they've already played, they played again. <laughs> and I, I looked over at Wade and Abby and Kim, and I said, but, did we already hear this song? And Kim's like, it's so good, they're just playing it twice. I'm like, I don't think that's why, but anyway. Um, anyway, from, okay, 20, it is 2017. March 8th of 2017 is when we recorded the promo video and first episode. Wow. Back when well, it was we'll a be chatting. <laughs> we will be chatting about how we celebrate 100. And mm-hmm. I think just even looking at the hairstyles and <laughs> listening back to Allison's choices <laughs> might, be, <laughs> might be a fun excavation <laughs> to celebrate 100. I don't know. How do people celebrate what is, like, it's historical to be a hundred episode. Oh, you were, okay. I was <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like people when they turn 100? Okay, I was trying to figure out where your, all of your input lines were going at the moment. So, and I couldn't quite follow it. Sorry, <laughs> you didn't give me enough communication. But um, no, I think we can definitely, I mean, in my mind, my number one of context is thinking about meaningful reflection. Like how can we rewind to our favorite convos or uh, lines that we loved, questions we can't stop thinking about. I mean, we've had a lot of threads throughout the, you know, all of our five years we've been doing this or so. And, um, and so definitely even kind of bringing those to the forefront too would be, be interesting. I was sharing with the training team. One of the greatest things that my mentor Gigi did for me as a trainer is to sit in my training. And for one training in particular, she counted the number of times that I said, um, Oh, let's not do that. So when I listen back to the podcast, I often count how many times I say, um, and I'm really working on that. And how many times the I other say, thing right? I, right? <laughs> right? Right. The other thing I want you to know is we just wrapped up conference for teammates. And if I had a dollar, um, for every time I made reference to Tess, <laughs> when I said super fun survey when I talked about strengths, when I talked about the evolution of strengths, our entire conference was focused on strengths, own, honor, grow, which was really the intention of name, um, aim, name, claim, aim, mm-hmm. and lots of test references. So oh, if you have new so fans, sweet. that's why I also just try to give credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. There are things that I've learned about strengths, so many things I've learned about strengths from you. And from these conversations. So not only is it 
Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to, I want to give a shout out to one of our most loyal and avid listeners, JC. Um, And she sent me a picture of you teaching and training on strengths and was told me that you had referenced um, me during when you were describing the language of super fun survey. So I did, I was feeling the love and I was thinking so much about the teammates team and, and everyone. It was so weird to be It's now been more than a year. I was thinking about that. Today is August 8th, um, which is a year um, to the day of when I moved um, to D.C. I hit the road, moved to D.C. today, uh, one year ago, which seems so, so mind-boggling and insane. I got pictures all this last week from my friends of my last week of shenanigans in Omaha before I left. I left Omaha on August 4th. Um, of last year and um, so yeah I mean just kind of an insane uh, insane very um, very reflective week for me as well as I've been thinking about this last year of my life Mm. I think that when we reflect back and listen to previous episodes if we celebrate 100 properly Mm -hmm. the future casting that we could do When you hear, and we talk a lot about serendipity here, Mm -hmm. but when you hear some of the things that are said, we have no idea what direction it's going to go. It's kind of like the word chooses you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Today, we're going to get back to more of our generational perspective. And as promised, I came ready and equipped with Gen X words and phrases, concepts, um, cultural references, items, mm-hmm. all the things. drinks, all <laughs> cool. the things. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to throw some of these and as per usual, they will not make a lot of sense because the way that my communication works is not typically in a linear format. Mm-hmm. So we're going to jump around a little bit, but I did try to group them. Okay. And there will be some fun where you get to guess what it means. Okay. There will also be some fun where we do a little bit of fill in the blank. Okay. So I'll give you, for example, I'm going to start out with He-Man and I don't know. She-Ra. He-Man and She-Ra. Castle okay. Grayskull, Skeletor, none of this. None Nothing. Of it. This is going to be great. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh That's low level. <laughs> that is low level. Damn. This is going to be rough. This is going to be rough. It's going to be great. And I just want to thank, wholeheartedly thank my crew, my amazing crew of Gen X pals who saw this as a call to action (laughs) and started at conference um, with our, our friends from South Dakota at conference who gave me some words and phrases and said, ask her this. What about this? And then I put the call out uh, to friends from back home and friends here in Colorado and said, if you have any suggestions and the suggestions were gold, Okay. reached out to some of our teammates, pals, great suggestions there as well. So we're just going to get started. Um, last episode, we were talking a little bit about cultural references and really how we came together. Um, mm-hmm. Tess being a millennial and me being a Gen Xer and the words and phrases and music references that really started this podcast and going into our hundredth episode, it's, it's really timely that we would do this. We talked about having word association game. We play that a lot here, which I think is fun, but it's not so much. I don't want you to just come up with a word. I'm going to ask you to try to explain. It's a Gen X or quiz. Yes. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) I'm just going to let you go. I I don't feel like I'm going to help you too much, but we're going to start with, um, what's Jenny's number? This was in a song, wasn't it? Correct. Is it the only number I can think of that's in a song is 8675309? Well done. Test. That's correct. Okay. Star number one. Okay. Star number one. I'm starring what you get correct. (laughs) Okay. Explain Jim and Tammy Faye. I have no idea. Jim and Tammy Faye, do you know their last name? No. Baker. Okay. Jim and Tammy Faye Baker? Nothing? No. Big mascara, like lots of crying on screen. It was a TV evangelist, Jim and Tammy Faye? No. Baker? Oh. 
So the things that you don't know, um, for the purposes of time, <laughs> I'm just going to put a little question mark next to, and to give your context, fun and games for later, Okay, You're you can look these things okay. up. Okay. I have had friends who have dressed like Jim and Tammy Faye for Halloween parties. Okay. Just to give some, some context there. Hmm. So I know that some of our listeners, when they listen back, will sh- shout answers out as they are listening <laughs> along. So I'm sure there's a few who sure knew. there's a lot. Yep. Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Um, I'd love for you to explain what you think this means. Where's the beef? Oh, it was an advertisement for something. I don't know if I can tell you. Wendy's. Wendy's. Good job. I'm going to give you a star for that. Oh, so that's okay. two Thank stars you. and one question mark. Okay. Um, <laughs> baby Jessica. She fell into a... Well... Yes, she did. Did you just guess that? I totally guessed that, yeah. <laughs> You're going to get a star for that. Okay. Quite a story. And so those of us who grew up during that time were very fearful of Wells. <laughs> she survived. It was fine. But we were very fearful of falling into a well. Oh, um, that's crazy. All right. And I thought we've talked about some of these in previous episodes, but floppy disks. Yes. You're familiar, familiar with, with a floppy concept. disk? Mm-hmm. Okay. How about a dot matrix printer? No, I'm not familiar. I've never heard of it. What does it do? So in order to print from our computer, our Apple II GS, we had to load paper that had little circles on the side, on oh, each that, side. Like, were they perf- perforated on yes. the side? Okay, yes. I've seen that one of That's those. That's a dot okay. matrix printer. Okay. At, in college... Allison's freshman year of college, we had one printer on the top floor of Sheldon in the computer room, and we were notoriously out of dot matrix paper. It was always an ordeal. So I'm going to give you kind of a Habsy star on even knowing your mom with us. With your stars. (laughs) And dial up. Yes. I, that was slightly in my generation too. Very okay. slightly. I uh, definitely, my early days of using the internet as a middle schooler, yeah, definitely had to access can you hear dial that up. Sound? Yes, I can, can hear the sound. It, it haunts me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can you explain who Spuds McKenzie is? No, I cannot. <laughs> well, Spuds is a dog. Okay. Um, again, for context, you'll have to look him up. Okay. Spuds is a dog, and if I'm I did not research these. I just, I mean, I know them culturally and I think I can remember, but I'm pretty sure he was associated with Bud Light. So those who are listening, if I'm wrong, you can shout at your um, podcast uh, device. Bud Light advertising campaign. Yep. Surprise, Allison knew that. Um, Spuds had, I think, like a hanker chief, like a hanky sort of thing he wore that was blue around his neck. A black and white dog. I don't really know the breed. Hmm. You didn't, I'm not even going to give you a half star for that. You looked no. it up. All right. <laughs> do you know who Max Headroom is? I do not. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're into beverages right now. So Max okay. Headroom, again, other Gen Xers shout at me if I'm wrong, but I believe he did some um, ads for Pepsi. And Max Headroom was essentially like a <laughs> he was a character that was essentially like a Pixar character but before before there was really good animation yeah it he was poorly animated almost like a robot okay. intended to be a ro- robot but i'm pretty sure it was for Pepsi correct i'm it up right now. <laughs> Max Headroom came from a lot of the people that I reached out to, which surprised me mm. because I barely remember the guy. He was yes. in a British made cyberpunk TV movie called Max Headroom 20 Minutes into the Future. Oh, well, maybe I have him wrong. I thought he did a Pepsi ad. Maybe. You might have to edit that out. <laughs> 
not going to end it the night. Oh, okay, was, so. Um, he's the spokesperson for New Coke after the return of Coca-Cola Classic. Oh, New Coke. So we're getting right into beverages. Okay. New Coke was a thing. And I don't think I've ever heard that. Like, how does it differ from Coke? Coke Classic okay. is the original Coca-Cola. Okay. They moved into this new Coke. There was also clear Pepsi. Pepsi okay. that was clear okay. on purpose. No color to it. Okay. So Pepsi clear um, looked very similar to Zima. And you're familiar with Zima. I'm no. familiar with Zima? Zima made a comeback. I thought maybe you would, your context would latch onto this. No. Okay, so let's, let's back up a little bit. New Coke, Michael Jackson was the promoter of Pepsi. Okay. Now I've got my people in my head correctly. Michael Jackson was a promoter of Pepsi. He did a video, his hair caught on fire. I shit you not, that really happened. Oh my gosh. He, like he was burned, his hair caught on fire for a oh Pepsi gosh. ad. So again, those of us who weren't worried about falling in a well, we were worried about being in a music I, video and our like, hair starting on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Mind blown. Okay. So during this time, there was a, like a beverage war going on because we all just drank soda. And no wonder we all have shitty teeth. Um, we drank soda all the time. We also drank Tang. Do you know what Tang is? I do you know what Tang is. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just sugar water. Yep. Straight up sugar water. Completely supported by our families, mothers, just mixing that up, handing it to us. Tang is straight up sugar water. And then in addition to Tang, we had Pepsi, Clear Pepsi, we had RC Cola, Coke, and New Coke. So they came up with this new recipe for Coke, and they okay. promoted the hell out of it. And Max Headroom helped with that while Michael Jackson was being His burned in a was on video. Fire. Yep. Yes. <laughs> There's also a soda called Tab. Tab was the soda that we all knew and loved, and it had this really cool kind of lettering on the can. And if you were super cool, you drank Tab. Um, RC was like the cheaper version of Pepsi or Coke. The other thing that came about during our, what I would call middle school and high school days, Cool Ranch Doritos. Mm. Those came out in, I think, like 1996. Okay. Maybe before 1992, three, but Cool Ranch Doritos, like when those things came out, the world was a new place and we all uh, ate them. They made their debut in 1986. Oh, I'm 10 years off. Math yeah. is hard. <laughs> also, they, of course that had to be 86. Allison, you graduated high school in 93. <laughs> Please edit that. Nope. <laughs> Jeez, Allison. All right. Cool Ranch Doritos. Zima was a malt beverage that was clear. It tasted so bad that you had to mix it with grenadine or Jolly Rancher to drink it. Oh my God. It had a comeback. A few years ago, it had a comeback. Um, and I. You'll have to check this out. So Clear Pepsi, RC Cola, New Coke, Tab, Cool Ranch Doritos, and Zima. Thank you, friends of Allison's who knew all of those things. Oh. Do you know who Marty McFly is? I do. Back to the Future. And I knew that you, the movie references you're going to get. So I knew that I could, you know, name some John Hughes movies like mm -hmm. Breakfast Club and Pretty 16 Candles. Cake. And you, mm -hmm. yeah, you get those. All right. You also know who Marty McFly and the DeLorean, what the yep. DeLorean is. Yes, I do. Reebok pumps. We're shifting now into attire. That's a type of shoe, I would assume, but... They were a type of shoe. All right. So you're going to get like a... You could pump them. Press on them. <laughs> okay. To make them yeah. do what? you press on them. To make them to, do what? Like, big. Bigger. Oh, okay. Get bigger. <laughs> okay. Reebok pumps. Um, and then we're going to go right into another category that I want you to guess. Okay. What am I talking about when I share these three words? Are you ready? I'm ready. Z calves, Pepe, and Lawman. Do 
to be more specific, Zeke Avarici, Pepe, and Lawman. What am I talking about? I have no idea. I would. We think... should be videoing this whole thing. I, I know. Your, your, I'm like, your blank stare is fabulous. <laughs> Those are types of jeans. Those are types of jeans. Oh, not at all where I was going. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Types of jeans. Okay. And Z calves were easier to roll. So we used to roll our jeans. You would pinch them together at the bottom. Okay. Like I'm talking about the hem, the base of your jeans, bottom. You would pinch them and roll them. And Z calves rolled better, in my opinion. I mean, we may get some blowback on this still. In my opinion, they rolled time. better. Uh, then then Pepe and Lamen. Mm. Um and Z calves were kind of the the ones that I had anyway were acid wash acid wash Z calves. Mm-hmm. All also around that same time were guest jeans and guest jeans were super popular as well. Mm. Okay. All right. Um you're familiar with shoulder pads? I am. I had them in the majority of of some of my dress shirts. <laughs> like my dressier silk I had many silk blouses. Like a silk shirt was the bomb for homecoming with big ass <laughs> shoulder pads. I've got a picture somewhere of it's Hopefully. blue and then it has this bright pink patch and then a, another bright turquoise and big old shoulder pads and it was silky. Please find that and share it with us so we can post it. I will do my episode. best to find it. Okay. Um, these have come back, um, but banana clips. The hair clips of some sort? They're hair clips, yeah. yes. And they were. They're the long, they've come back. They were longer and shaped like a banana. And oh. you just put, put put your hair in them. Yes, except for they weren't clippy, like mm-hmm. yours as a clip. It was like two pieces of plastic Black. that just wanted to tangle your hair up. Oh, lovely. That would take hours to undo. Jeez. And they, they didn't have a clippy. They just attached in this like thing at the top. Oh. Gosh, we should be recording this because okay. my visuals are good. <laughs> Swatch Watch. Yes, I've heard of it before. Swatch Watches were super cool. If you were cool, you had a Swatch Watch. Mm-hmm. Um, there were all, there was also a thing called Slap Bracelets. Yes, we had those too. Okay. Well, those I think were kind of trendy during our time. Do you know what a caboodle is? No, I'm thinking of a kazoo. Go ahead and guess what a caboodle is. <laughs> I don't know that I want to. Damn it, I should have just let you guess kazoo. A caboodle was a makeup container, a holder of all your things. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh We had pink, like turquoisey, light blue. I mean, everybody wanted a caboodle. Are those the the ones that would open up to have like different levels? Like. Yes. Yes. Okay. It was essentially a tackle box. Yeah. But. Yes. um, this pretty colors, yeah. That someone said, why not put makeup in this and let's completely market this to teenage girls and make a million dollars. Charm bracelets. Yes. Very popular. Mm-hmm. Jelly shoes. Yes. We had jelly shoes, too. Jelly shoes were quite popular. We were in the 90s, too. Um, we also carried around trapper keepers. Yes. And it was the highlight of the beginning of the school year, right about this time, that you wanted to get to your local Pomida to get the coolest trapper keeper because if you waited too long you weren't going to get anything that was cool (laughs) that came from our friend jay by the way trapper keepers love it thanks jay um i'm going to switch a little bit now into cultural references when it came to tv okay what tv show does am i referencing when i when i ask this question who killed jr I reference this TV show quite a bit. Really? Mm -hmm. I talk about, like, when you walk into certain places, I say it's like going back in time, like, to the set of Dallas. Mm. The Ewing family. JR, Bobby, Pamela. No, never watched it. Oh, my gosh. I've heard the expression, though. I've heard the phrase. Mm. And a spinoff of Dallas was my favorite show the best show Thursday nights Knott's Landing and Knott's Landing was dicier than Dallas Dallas was like clean enough for 
think it came on Friday nights at like 7.30 or 8 o'clock. Knott's was on at 9 on Thursdays. Okay. And it was dicier. There was just more more soap opera stuff going on. We used to have Knott's parties. How we navigated these without cell phones, I have no idea. But we would go and watch Knott's Landing at someone's house. I, there's nothing better than that show. I need to see if I can find it on... Um, Netflix because I would watch that over and over. It's so funny. There was a game show called Double Dare. Okay. And I'm going to encourage you to look it up because the things that happened on that show were quite interesting. Get your okay. pen out. Yeah. Double Dare. Also, Nickelodeon was new to us okay. at that time. Huh. And the phrase green slime what would happen is if you got the answer wrong um, in certain pieces, but also it was just like funny joke, haha, to be slimed. Oh, yeah. The characters were like drenched in green slime. I didn't have cable because I was on the farm. So I would go to my grandma's house to watch Nickelodeon and just delight in watching people get doused with a bucket of That's green slime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were, we were evolved. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, what does WWF stand for? Is that the World Wildlife Fund? That's what I see With the panda bear. Do you know who Hulk Hogan is? Randy oh, Savage? Yeah. Yes, I know who Muscle Man yeah. Randy yeah, Savage? Yeah. Um, so, world, wrestling something? World wrestling? wrestling Foundation. Okay. Well done. You get, I'm going to give you a star for that. I feel like but. it was also your time period was always also when. Sorry, we weren't carried. We're, I'm thinking about the Sarah McLaughlin like sad oh, no. puppy commercials. No, like, that's later. Like those really, that's those, later. Okay. We okay. didn't care about the pandas first. We wanted to know if if it was going to be Randy Savage <laughs> kicking Roddy Rowdy Roddy Piper's ass. Oh, that's not what we cared about. Okay. Um, Priorities. Do you know how to play Mash? Yes, of course. So what does M A S and H stand oh, my for? Gosh. It's mansion apartment. Um, shack or house. Good job. Okay, Tess, that's like multiple stars. Thank you. We played that I, a lot. It, it, that's that's like a essential teenage, you know, intergenerational across the generations. I had notebooks <laughs> full. Oh, for sure. Full. For sure. You can about imagine. My yes. question, given your strengths, is when you talked about who you were going to marry, did you put people you knew or did you put celebrities? Oh no, people I knew. That wasn't even fun to put a celebrity. I was going to marry Kenny Rogers. There wasn't anybody else that needed to be listed there. But it, I thought the rules were you put like three people, like the first person was the one you really wanted, you were like mm -hmm. really smitten with. And then the second one was, you know, maybe okay. And the third one was like, well, if I had to. And the fourth one was like, oh, hell no. Mm -hmm. And I would sometimes on the bus, you know, with the numbers. Oh, yeah. Just accidentally skip around. I know. His name I was Mike, by the way. The kid who I did not want to be married to, his name was Mike. <laughs> oh, the irony. Um, I would always, in, in my early strategic number three strength brain, yes, normally you would think people would prioritize, and most of my friends just did, like this is the number one. I would always mess it or like mix it up. Or on the second round, I would count to see where things would land based on the number of options in each of the categories. And then I'd figure out where I needed to put the person that I wanted to marry in my order so it would land on them. Strategic match. Yep, for sure. <laughs> okay, what's the clapper? Is it the hand thing? The toy? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Damn, we should be recording this. She is waving around what would be like the carnival stick of the hand claps. Yeah. No. no, the clapper, um, it was a whole TV, um, mm. like first seen on TV, sort of all of that started at that time. Like the things that you would see on TV at night that were promoted, but it was the clapper and it would turn your lights on and off. Oh, okay. Not familiar? I'm you gotta look that up. I'm okay. putting question marks next to the things you have to look up and I'll send you a list. Okay, thank you. All right. Butterfly in the sky. You know how I feel? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's 
birds in the sky. Where am I, is this a fill in the blank option? Or Butterfly is in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. It's. Reading Rainbow. Oh, cool. So, yeah. <laughs> all of my Gen X friends, as you are listening back, you're welcome. That song is stuck in your head now. I could not believe when I saw this come up. This came from a friend. Mm-hmm. When I saw this come up, I immediately knew the song. Yeah. Immediately knew the song. Butterfly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, also, at that same time, we had after school specials mm-hmm. that made us believe that we were going to be kidnapped at any given moment. So like not only were we worried about falling into wells, getting our hair on fire, hair, on hair fire. starting on fire cuz we're in music videos, mm-hmm. but also every after school special was all the dangers of just leaving your house. Mhm. Um latchkey kids really. That was our generation. So you know, get us home and have us watch TV specials that make us scared to death. Um great concept. Great concept. MTV was actually music videos and on repeat Mm -hmm. and so lovely to go back and witness some of those things and I would encourage you to look at some of their very first their original I used to know what the very first one was but I can't remember now and someone listening I'm sure knows do you know what you would get if you filled up your bucket your bucket your book it. If you read enough books, we had a book it program. Mm. You would earn. In my generation, I don't know if it was the same. When you finished all your books, you bring it to Pizza Hut and get a free. Yep. Your personal free pizza. what? Personal, personal pan pizza. Yeah. Personal pan pizza. Oh. That's that's like quadruple stars for you there. Oh. Um. Did you have the Scholastic book orders? Me did. Mm-hmm. Were they also named Troll at one time? Yes. And I forgot about that until I looked that up. We're segueing now. Um, are you familiar with McGruff? Uh-uh. The crime dog? Yes. He came up. <laughs> I'm. Very few of these are from me, so it's our listeners who You need are, to shout out some more of these people who they're coming from. Thank you all um, for contributing. <laughs> I've got... Uh, Chad and Jamie gave me some great, great musical references, which I'll get to. Um, and I'll get to a couple of cultural references um, that, that came about. We did talk a little bit about Walkman mm-hmm. previously on one of our episodes when we talked about music. But mm-hmm. that was the most consistent when I put out the call. Mm-hmm. Um, ask her if she knows what a Walkman is. Yep. And so that was a super uh, popular one. What was Lorena Bobbitt famous for? No idea. I need you to guess that I just I can't I can't do this without guesses because Gen Xers listening are crying laughing right now. Um, what did Lorena Bobbitt do? Lorena Bobbitt invented the Bobbitt. <laughs> no. I have no idea. Try again. One more try. Oh my gosh! I'm trying to even think of things. Um, Lorena Bobbitt. She severed her husband's penis. Are you for real? I'm for real. <laughs> oh my Look it gosh, up. I'm totally looking her up. And that came from my friend Kim, who <laughs> absolutely <laughs> deserves the credit for that. When I said, what are some 90s cultural <laughs> references? She's like, Lorena Bobbitt. Yes, that was a total like outlier. Was what's, not expecting what's, you to answer that. what's the year on that? <laughs> Lorena What's the year on Lorena? Um, well, she was born in 1970. Let's see. An American couple. They were married in 89. Their relationship received international press coverage, uh, coverage in 1993 when Lorena cut off John's penis with a knife while he was asleep in bed. It was subsequently surgically reattached. Yep. True. Wow. I was graduating high school in 93 for reference. Um, moving on from Lorena, I know that's a hard one to switch from, <laughs> wow. but there were some things that we, some toys that we had, games that we played. Cabbage Patch Kids, Yep. and then there were Garbage Pail Kids. 
What? Yes. Garbage Pail Kids? Garbage Pail Kids. I believe I had Garbage Pail Kids stickers that were scratch and sniff that just smelled terrible on purpose. Um, you'll have to check out. I knew you knew oh Cabbage Patch, but not Garbage Pail. Do you know what a glow worm is? I don't know that I do. Glow worms were very popular. They were a doll. These, this is a hideous concept that you squeezed. It was a doll with a doll baby kind of face, and it was all green in a pod, and you squeezed it, and its face lit up. That's so weird. Terrifying, and we gave these to toddlers. <laughs> um, Simon, the game Simon. Mm. Do you remember like that? The, with the red with the and colors. the blue and the... Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay, you get a star for that. Are you familiar with Columbia House? I am not familiar with Columbia House. So you could get records, cassettes for a penny if you joined the Columbia House mm -hmm. record like Colum club. Mm -hmm. oh. Columbia House was a record um, and, and cassette. I'll um, encourage you to look that one up. And on that note, we're going to move right into this. What was We Are the World about? AIDS, right? Good, yes, well done. Farm Aid. Mm -hmm. Farm Aid was... <laughs> no, I have no idea. Started by Willie Nelson. It, it's a look up. You need to look mm -hmm. it up. Okay. Hands Across America. No. What do you think Hands Across America is about? Some social program or nonprofit. Uh -huh. Uh, it was social justice, social justice. Oh. where the point was for everyone to hold hands across the United States <laughs> in recognition. I'm not kidding. In recognition of like poverty and hunger and oh. like there's a, if you Gen Xers, if you look this up, this stuff is gold because I did look today. Demi Moore was with Emilio Estevez, I believe at the time. And that just blew my mind. I was like, whoa. So everybody had t-shirts, like whether they went or not, and then everybody mm -hmm. claimed to hold hands. There's no proof of it. That it was really this long chain across the United States, but I believed. Hmm. Um, we talked about mixtapes mm -hmm. um, previously. Who perfected the moonwalk? And do you know what the moonwalk is? I do know what the moonwalk is. Was it Michael Jackson? It was Michael Jackson, mm. prior to the hair thing. <laughs> prior to the hair incident. <laughs> Do you know the band Wham? I do. Um, because can you of Last Christmas. Right? <laughs> last Christmas. Do they sing Last Christmas, right? That's that's why you know yeah. Wham? <laughs> it's one of my favorite. <laughs> so George Michael, mm -hmm. Wham, they're great Wham songs. Because he went solo, right? And he, he sang did. Faith was his knockout solo. Yes. Right? Well, beautiful. Okay. You get stars for that. Wow, thank um, you. But Wham is with an exclamation point. Yep. And that's the... And an the H, band right? W-H-A-M? Correct, so correct. Then. Extra stars for you yeah, on that you. test. Um, on Sunday nights, and we talked about this on a previous episode, you could call in and leave dedications. <laughs> to KFRX, you could call in Sunday night dedications. Okay. And you could dedicate a song to someone, and then you would, like, sit around and listen for it to be played and set your cassette to dub it. Yep. So if you had dual cassettes, you could dub a tape. Yep. Okay. So the way that I got to know and love Zeppelin is because my friend Travis would dub old Ze Zeppelin cassettes onto another cassette that was called dubbing tapes. And that was where the mixtape came from. Yeah. Okay. And on Sunday nights, you could listen to dedications. And if you were gifted with knowing when to hit record, you could record that person, the DJ saying, mm. you know, to Ryan from Allison, fill in the blank. So, and this came up when I sent this out to to uh, friends of mine who reminded me that I did actually call in dedications. I am ashamed mm -hmm. to say that. Do you know what a pound puppy is? No. So similar to Cabbage Patch Kids. Okay. But they were puppies from the pound. Oh, oh my gosh, that's horrible. I mean, we, we were 
Garbage mm. Pail Kids. Garbage Pail Kids and Pound Puppies. Oh my gosh, Glowworms? Yeah. That that was? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Explains a lot about a lot of us, I think. Um, <laughs> dysentery. I do know what that is. That's from Oregon Trail, right? Yes. Yeah. Or the joke no one is from Oregon Trail, but no one no wanted one to wanted, die of dysentery. Yes. No one wanted to die of dysentery. Yep. Explain a collect call. Explain it. Ooh, I know the term. I know you had to, there was some sort of payment. Was that on the part of the person who received it? Right. They had to yes. pay for it. Yes. Well done, Tess. Um, so a collect call, you could call someone else and you would get the, you would answer the phone, say, hello, Allison, there's a collect call from Tess. Are you willing to accept this call? Yeah. And, then and my answer would, was always yes. Yeah. And your parents were right. like, why did you accept a collect call, Allison? We also had long distance charges. Yeah. Uh, another phrase that came up was roaming fees, roaming charges. I think that stretches a little bit further past the 80s sort of theme. But mm -hmm. dial-up roaming charges and a collect call were some things that came up in addition mm -hmm. to Sunday night dedications. We've already talked about a party line. Oh, yes. That'd be a good one to add. I did not know what that was until you told me about it on an episode. And what I would give, <laughs> what I would give for those days we could just pick up and hear people's conversations. Listen to anybody. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would come home from school and my mom would just be standing there on the phone listening, <laughs> Listen. holding her hand over the receiver, listening. Yeah. Oh, because really? you couldn't like hold the, so to hang up the phone, there was like a disconnect. I don't know what that's called. Yeah. Yeah. Someone will help me, I'm sure, but that would hang up the call. Mm -hmm. So to mute yourself, had you had to power. hold yeah. your hand over the receiver and hope for the best. Mm. And I knew people, I mean, people had to know my mom was on there. Okay. <laughs> so I think I've covered most of the topics. Now what I would like you to do is these are the, the fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I did he man and Shira as a start. Help. I've fallen. And I can't get up. Good. You knew that? It's, yeah. Lifeline commercial. I feel like I saw those growing up. Gag me with a... <laughs> I don't want to fill in the blank with what I was thinking, <laughs> so I'm just going to let you fill in the blank for me. This was an 80s reference. It was a valley girl was like a whole language. That's where the, you know, like... I, like, I mean, I know valley girl, but like, what is the fill in the blank? Gag me gag? with a spoon. Gag me with a spoon was Valley Girl speak. Okay. Oh my goodness, we should be recording this. I cannot say that enough today, friends. Gag me with a spoon. That came from our friend Jerlene. Thanks, um, Jerlene. <laughs> I pity the... Fool, who, good. something... No, just, that's it. That's it stops what? right there. The it stops right there. Okay. I pity the fool. Okay. And that came from what? From whom um, and what show? He wears a lot of chains, like a lot of gold chains, and he had a legit mohawk. Oh, no, not who I'm thinking. Tell me. Mr. T. Okay. You know who that is? From the A-Team? Okay. I want you to look up the A-Team characters okay. and guess which one I was in love with. It'll be easy. It'll be easy for you. Okay. Just say... No. And that came from whom? Drugs. Right. Who was the promoter of that? Oh, I don't know. Wasn't it Moms? Moms so, Against Drugs or something like that? It was, Nan it was Nancy Reagan. Oh, yes. I knew that. Very much a, you know, then we had eggs in frying pans where, like, this is your brain, this yep. is your brain on drugs. Yes. Yeah. Um, what you talking about? What you talking about? Someone's name. What you talking about? I don't know. Willis. What is that? What you talking about, Willis? I've never heard um, that. Oh my gosh, what's the name Willis? of the show? Gary Coleman is the actor. Allison, what is the name of the show? Um, Come on, input file. It's not Three's Company. That's immediate what came to my mind. Have you 
By the way, have you ever watched Three's Company reruns? Mm mm. Oh. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? Gary Coleman. Different strokes. Different strokes. Great sitcom. Um, and then I think that wraps up all. Wow. All of the fill in the blanks. Um, and I gave you baby Jessica. You did really well, Tess. <laughs> you have like way well. <laughs> more stars. You have way more stars than question marks. Wow. I didn't um, feel like I did very well. There was so much I didn't know. Surprise. Okay, last one. Okay. Three, two, one. Blast off. No. In reference to the first shuttle space launch. No, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> Three, I was thinking more two, historical. one. I don't know. Contact. So, again, we watched a lot of PBS. Okay. Look up 321 Contact. You would have okay. loved all of these shows, by the okay. way. And you probably would have loved the, the after school specials. Mm-hmm. Um, little lessons learned. But 321 Contact. Great, great term. Um, learning. It was like a learning series, but it was through. PBS, and I'm trying to remember what it was, um, the show that it was connected to. Mm. So we, I want to thank um, numerous people who contributed today, uh, Jerlene, Jamie and Chad, um, my Golden Girls thread, and that includes uh, Katie, Aaron, Kim, Sherry. Um, I had help from my classmates, uh, Travis and Craig. Uh, my friend Craig said, this is just going to be too much for my old man brain, so he didn't even <laughs> contribute. Our teammates, friends, Keith and Jay. Um, Jay specifically wanted me to make sure I mentioned Jack- Michael Jackson's hair catching on fire. <laughs> and you're familiar with Fraggle Rock? Fraggle Rock? No. Oh. What's Fraggle Rock? Like, I mean, nothing is as good as the Muppets, as we know. Like, the Muppets are okay. new level. There's nothing better than Muppets, and I will f- fight anybody who tries to speak ill of them. But Fraggle Rock was like a Muppety sort of spin-off. Okay. Puppets. Okay. Puppets that sang. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, I know you mentioned he also, he, um, Jay also gave a lot of Top Gun references, oh, yeah. which I think are coming back around because of the new Top Gun, which I refuse mm-hmm. to see. Um, my friends, uh, Jeremy and, and Ryan, who mentioned VHS rentals, how you had to, when you returned yeah. a, a movie, like, be kind, rewind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. the phrase. Yeah. yeah I thought oh, you yeah, might yeah. have to, you might know that one. Um, my friend Cole mentioned the new Coke, um, I Pity the Fool, and what you're talking about, Willis. Uh, Michelle and Trisha uh, mentioned Zima, um, and also the Pity the Fool, and what you're talking about, Willis. Where's the Beef was the most popular. Uh, Suzanne, I forgot this one. Mm. Do you know who the Hoff is? No. David Hasselhoff. Oh, yeah. He Mm. had a show, and for the life of me right now, this moment, I cannot think of what it was called. And it was about a talking car. The car spoke. I can actually hear the car's voice right in this moment, but I cannot think of it to save my life. Um... Oh my goodness, what is it? And Tess is looking it up. Night Rider. I did a baton routine to the (laughs) theme song of Night Rider. (laughs) Of course I did, because we all we all did baton. um, Because we didn't have anything else to do. Um, My hairstylist Scott and his partner Kirk they had some contributions. Uh, Scott wanted me to mention mall bangs. Mm. So we had really really tall tall tall. Love it. Thanks. Um, new Coke. I mean, a lot of New Coke references. Mm. Knots Landing, yeah, Shoulder really Pads. Mm. Um, he also said it was the best music era ever. Mm. Uh, my friend Chris mentioned Farm Aid. My friend Abby mentioned Book It and Tang. Um, she also mentioned the Truffle Shuffle and the Care Bear Stare. I'll encourage you to look those up. Um, my wild friend Susan. Um, Susan mentioned the Rachel, which I knew you would know mm-hmm. because you, you've watched more Friends episodes than than I have. Mm-hmm. So, great work mm-hmm. uh, to this team of 
Gen yes. Xery Thank you expertise. All. Yes, what a great super list. fun. I was there were I was surprised by there were so many phrases or things that I I know you're like you got a lot more than I thought. Um, there were a lot that I just had no idea. Like I've never heard of New Coke. Never garbage pail well, kids. They, like, they things, went back. You know, hmm. They got rid of New Coke. They went yeah. back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but it's it's kind of so funny to like think about think about that kind of stuff. So yeah, that was, gosh, it was interesting. So many things that I learned. I love it. Um, we did talk a little bit in the green room ahead of time about how it really only made sense to do it in this direction because all of my cultural references from when I was growing up, you would know <laughs> because you lived during those Hopefully. decades. You did. Um, and with Lauren being just a few years younger than me, you'd probably know a lot of them too. So yeah, but I maybe have shared this story on the podcast before, but mm-hmm. it came up again today because my stepdad still uses it. So when we originally were texting and had text language, mm-hmm. LOL, I thought meant lots of love. <laughs> so I would send a text to the kids on my Blackberry and yeah. say, you know, something, something, LOL. And then it was like a colleague or something sent me a message that was funny and said, LOL. And I looked at that message like, wait, what? And so I said something to Lauren and she goes, you don't even know what it means to you. <laughs> and I said, no, I thought it meant la- uh, lots of love. And she said, it means laugh out loud. She said, you've been sending us texts and at the end of them, laugh out loud, not, I love you a lot. So my stepdad, to this date, and he does not have a smartphone. He continues to use a flip phone, continues to use a flip phone, even though we try to, to get things for him. I sent a picture of this to the kids. He said, I need an update on your address. And um, I sent it to him and he goes, thanks, have a good day, LOL. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh so I do think that hopefully I would know some of the cultural references that you would make, but over the, um, hundred episodes that we are almost reaching. We have talked about some of those things mm-hmm. like MySpace. I wasn't something I was familiar with. Mm-hmm. You brought me to the glorious world of Spotify that I've never left now. It's now one of my favorite places to house playlists, share yeah. playlists. I listen to release radar and discover weekly religiously. Mm-hmm. Um, very grateful for your influence there. Mm-hmm. But I think some of those things that I'd be less familiar with, you could speak to, sure. but these, these just drifted away. Yeah. Yeah. They just drifted away. Mm-hmm. And, um, some of them have come back yeah. when I think about, you know, boat shoes essentially have come back a time or two. They're not called that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, jelly shoes have had appearances yeah. over and over. Zima even had a comeback. Mm-hmm. So I would love to hear from our listeners. Mm-hmm. What did I miss? Yeah. What did I, um, fail to include. You can certainly uh, quiz Tess. I wish we would have (laughs) had a live feed for this because your, (laughs) your facial reactions to some of these are. Oh my gosh. Classic. It was, it was great. It was very educational. It reminds me as we're wrapping up here. um, I think we talked about this uh, one of the episodes, but I saw kind of a resurgence of this concept that somebody posted on social media that like, when I was young, a family that had two cars in their household was considered like the ultimate sign of success. Yeah. And I know we've talked about, we, we talked about that as a topic. Um, and I think like just questions like that are so helpful to, to contextualize like our relative experiences growing up and what was formative for us and what media and, and music and things really influenced us um, as a generation. So mm-hmm. I think that's, I think it's great. It was awesome. Awesome to hear. And so awesome to see your energy around all of this. (laughs) Like you were just so excited to share this list with me. And I think that's part of like the joy I'm taking away from it as well. But yeah, I love love a good list. Love Love a good list. I know you love a good list, especially a Gen Gen Xer list like that. So, oh my gosh. So lovely. Awesome. Well, um, so that'll be homework. What did Ali miss? But also no matter what generation you come from, what are those specific generational um, references that uh, that are unique to your generation that you want to share with us and um, 
and we might ask you what they mean if we don't know. So send that, send a little explanation blurb with it if you want to as you as you reach out to us. And then um, we're thinking intentionally about what celebrating episode 100 looks like. So if you've been been a listener for a while or for a short amount of time, if you have any thoughts or ideas, um, this is a lot of conversations between us, but we know it happens in the larger context of a community of listeners. So we would love um, for people a part of that community, if you have any ideas or thoughts or things that you wanna contribute, if you have a favorite episode or a favorite um, quote or a favorite piece of homework or takeaway that you wanna share with us, we'd love to shout out um, some listeners um, next episode. So thank you all for tuning in. And with that, I'll say, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Episode 99 of Jen and Millie. If you enjoyed today's conversation, consider sharing this episode with a friend. To interact with us and share your responses to the questions we posed, best way to do that is by giving us a follow on Instagram at Jen and Millie. That's at G-E-N-N-A-N-D-M-I-L-L-I-E. Until next time.